All right. Good morning, brothers and sisters. This morning, I'm going to do a little short study into Paul the Apostle. So the other day, I had a comment, or a few comments on a on one of my older videos, which have been removed since then because the person was quite rude and uh, made several accusations that they that were unfounded. So therefore, I just blocked them and removed their comments. But I still have their comments in my email. So right now, I'm going to go in, and, and they told me that the that the apostle Paul was apostate, and. I've been through this before more than once, so it's not the first time this has happened. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to go in and show a few things. Because this person said that Paul didn't preach repentance, that Jesus did. Okay? So first, I'm just going to knock that out of the water, because clearly we all know that Paul preached repentance. He, he was a, the, the picture of repentance. He was the picture of turning and thinking differently. We know what that word means. It means to be turned and think differently. So he said that Luke only recorded what Paul did. So we're going to go over here in Acts, and we're going to look in Acts chapter 17, where Luke was writing about what Paul did. And I'm just going to read this one half of a verse from Acts 17, verse 30. The second half of the verse is Paul speaking, written by Luke, and it says, But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. And he says, God is commanding all men everywhere to repent. But yet this man told me that Paul didn't preach repentance. Okay? So let's just go on. This man gave me several scriptures that he said were were Paul speaking blasphemy. And I will leave a list of those in the description of this video so you can go look at every single one of those yourself and study them in the Greek and see if Paul is blaspheming. But let's just go into it for a second and let's think about whether if Paul was, uh, let's just pretend, okay, that Paul actually was apostate. And he wasn't an apostle. So for starters, we'll, we'll just start by talking. Paul started, like he went to Ephesus and started the church in Ephesus. So if Paul was an apostate and taught false doctrine, then that means Ephesus was a false church and not really a church of believers because they were started by Paul. Okay? Okay. That's the only church I'm going to go into right now because Paul started many other churches and wrote many other letters to other churches. But that's the one that's going to really count when we're talking here. Okay, so if Paul started Ephesus and Ephesus wasn't really a church, it was built on false doctrine and wasn't even true believers there, well then why, we'll ask our question, why did the Apostle John write to the church at Ephesus in Revelation. Okay, that means that the Apostle John put his approval on the church at Ephesus that Paul started. Okay? So we're pretending that Paul was apostate. Okay? And that means that John the Apostle put his approval on the apostate Paul. Okay? So now we have John's approval on the apostate Paul. We also know that Luke of course, put his approval on him. Okay, we'll go over here and look right here and see if, if Luke put his approval on Paul. Okay, we're going to look here in 2 Timothy. Okay, and here, here Paul is writing. Of course, it's probably, I don't know for sure if Paul is writing in his own hand. I haven't looked to see right here at the moment. But right here, let's see here. Oh. Hopefully I can find it real easy. Okay, yeah, he says, Do thy diligence to come to me shortly. He's talking to Timothy. He says, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. He's, Paul says, Crescens to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. 
And then he says, only Luke is with me. So Luke was still with him. Okay? And then he gives, gives Timothy an order to take Mark. Mark, does any, do any of you know who Mark is? Mark is the author of the Gospel of Mark. So therefore we know, according to the, to the writings, that, that if Luke just wrote what Paul did, then according to Luke's writings of what Paul did, he sent to bring Mark to come to him because Mark was profitable to Paul for ministry. So Paul and Mark were friends, even though they'd been in a fight in the past. So Paul and Mark were friends, and Mark is the one that wrote the gospel according to Mark, and Luke is the one that wrote the gospel according to Luke, and Luke is also the one that wrote Acts. Okay, so remember, if Paul is an apostate, then that means that Mark is hanging without, without with an apostate and agreeing with apostate terms and agreeing with false doctrine, just like Luke is, okay? And remember, John agreed that Ephesus was a real church, so he believed in Paul, false apostate things, just like Paul. So if we're going to remove Paul from the Bible, then we have to remove Mark, which is the gospel according to Mark. We have to remove the, the gospel according to Luke. And we have to remove the gospel according to John because he was apostate. Because he believed Paul actually started a real church when Paul was apostate. So therefore, in removing those, we've removed all of Paul's letters. We've removed the gospel according to Mark, the gospel according to Luke, and the gospel according to John. We have to remove 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John because they were written by John also. So now we're down quite a few books out of the New Testament, aren't we? Because these people were, were agreeing and hanging out and putting their approval on, on apostate churches and things like that. So now we've removed John from the Bible. Sorry about that. And Paul and Mark and Luke. Okay, well let's go see. Over here, we're going to go look at 2 Peter. Okay. This person who wrote to me in his comments also said that 2 Peter wasn't, wasn't written by Peter. Okay. Well, that was up for debate hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago and has been determined that 2 Peter is written by Peter. I've looked through it myself. You are free to do so yourself and see if 2 Peter is written by Peter. Well, in 2 Peter, Peter endorses Paul. And the person that wrote to me said that it was a terrible endorsement. Okay? That it was a terrible endorsement and it can be taken either way. Either anti or for. Okay, so let's read this endorsement in 2 Peter, and we're going to pretend that it is indeed Peter writing, okay? It says, in verse 15 of 2 Peter chapter 3, it says, And account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Okay, so the man said that calling someone a beloved brother isn't a good endorsement. Okay, but we'll, we'll just go beyond that. As our beloved brother Paul, also, according to the wisdom given unto him, who is he talking? Who, gave the, who gives people gifts and wisdom? God does, right? Paul, according to the give, wisdom given unto him by God, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or twist as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destru destruction. Okay, so he said this wasn't a good, dis uh, a, a good endorsement for Paul. Yet, this man, if it was indeed Peter speaking, said Paul was a beloved brother. And he was given wisdom. 
And also in all his epistles, he spoke things that are hard to be understood, which unlearned men and unstable twist as they do the other scriptures. Other scriptures. So this man who endorsed Paul is calling Paul's letters scripture. That's the biggest endorsement you can give on someone's letter. To call the letters he has written inspired, breathed word of God. But yet people say that Paul isn't, a, isn't an apostle. He's apostate. Well, let's pretend if he was apostate and this is actually Peter writing, then we must remove, get this, not only, not only Peter. We must remove First and Second Peter from your Bible now. But you have to remember, Paul made a mission and went on a journey. And I'm not going to go to that scripture right now because you can look it up yourself. Paul went on a journey to Jerusalem. And who in Jerusalem gave him the right hand of fellowship? Peter. Cephas, which is Peter. James, the brother of Jesus. And John the Apostle. So therefore, if James, the brother of Jesus, Peter, and John the Apostle, which we have already removed, being that Paul, according to these people, is apostate, so now we've re we have to remove the, the book of uh, James, where he wrote. So now, brothers and sisters, let's find out what is left in our Bible. I hope you realize that if you remove Paul from your New Testament, you're left with the book of Matthew. And then you have no Mark, no Luke, no John, no Acts, no Romans, no Hebrews, no First and Second Corinthians. There's only two books left in your New Testament. The book of Matthew and the book of Jude. And that doesn't even leave enough witnesses left to prove that Jesus came to this earth and died and was resurrected. It only leaves one witness, Matthew, and no other witnesses. So once again, I'm going to just state, you can continue to remove Paul from your Bible, but you have to remove the entire rest of your New Testament. You can call the things Paul said heresy, or you can actually look into the Greek language and study them and see that he's the, he's the literal picture of repentance for us to follow after. The man who once killed Christians now, now is completely sorrowful and does the opposite and builds churches and, and goes and dies in the name of our Lord. Like I said, this is not going to be a super deep study. But just go look for yourself and see if you can remove Paul from your New Testament and it still be there. Like I said, I will leave all those verses this person, I'm not even going to name them, this person left and said that Paul was speaking, uh, speaking blasphemy and heresy. I'll leave those all in the description so you can look for yourselves. But brothers and sisters, do your own study. Research deep. Research deep. Because these people are going to tell you crazy things that aren't true. I love you all, brothers and sisters, and you have a blessed, wonderful day. Stay strong in the Lord. Jesus loves you.